Hello, learners of math. Financial models. Suppose you deposit $100 into an account with an annual percentage rate, which is an APR, of 4%. Fill in the table below with the future values of your investment. We're going to do this column by column. An annual interest rate of 4% compounded annually means to get 4% of interest added to your deposit, which we call the principal, and we add 4% of the principal to the principal. So after one year, you could break this calculation down into two steps. So the interest alone would be 4%, which you change to a decimal of $100. That's $4. But then you have to add the principal plus the interest. And so you have now $104 in your bank account after one year. Now the next year, you're gonna get 4%, not of $100, but 4% of $104. So you'll gain more than $4 in the second year. This is the idea of compound interest. You keep getting 4% of a larger and larger amount as time goes on. There is a way to calculate this amount, $104, that we just calculated right here, but in a single calculation. You simply take your amount of money in your account at the start of the year, which is $100, and at the end of the year, you get 4%. So you multiply by 1.04. Do one plus the interest rate in decimal form, and this takes you right to the amount of money that you would have after one year. So after two years, you would take the amount of money you started with, which is 1004, and multiply it by another 1.04. But the first $104, this right here, we could break this down. How did we get that in the first place? Well, it was the initial deposit of 100 times a 1.04, and now we're multiplying by another 1.04. So if we start with $100 and you multiply by 1.04 once and then multiply that by 1.04 again, you will arrive at the amount of money you would expect to see in your account after two years is up. So we have 100 times 1.04. And since we're just doing two of them, I'm going to square that. So 108 and 16 cents. Each year, you just keep multiplying by another 1.04. And so after five years, you can expect your principal to be multiplied by a total of five 1.04s. So I'm going to use the exponent, 1.04 to the fifth, change that to a five. I'm going to round to the nearest penny, so 121 and 67 cents. And this is how you get amounts in your bank account if your interest is compounded just once per year. What would happen if you did five and a half years? Then you would simply do a five and a half up here for your exponent. Okay, now what does it mean to compound your interest semi-annually? What this means is that you get interest more than once per year. You're going to get it twice per year in this case. And you're not going to get the 4% all of it at the same time. You're going to get half of it, but twice. So you're going to get a 2% and then another 2%. Is this going to be more or less than just doing 4% once? So let's say at the six month mark, you're going to have your principal of $100 and you're going to multiply it by 1.02. So $102 is what you'll have in your bank account after six months. But after a year, you're going to take the $102 and give it another 2% of that. So you're actually going to go up by more than a total of $4 because a 2% of $102 is more than $2. And so after a year, you're going to do a $100 deposit and you're effectively going to multiply by 1.02 twice. So $104.04. So you got four extra pennies by compounding twice per year versus compounding it just annually. Now after two years, the calculation is going to be your, your principal of $100, and you're going to get 2% a total of four times. 2% after six months, 2% after another six months, 2% after another six months, and then 2% at the end of the two years. It takes us to 108 and 24 cents. So compare that to the result you had in your bank account after just compounding annually after two years. So compounding twice per year gives you a slightly better yield. And now let's do the comparison of the five-year mark. So if you do this for five years, let's see if we can come up with what calculation I would do here. So you're getting 2%, which is exactly half of the APR. You're getting 2% every six months and five years. So we should get 2% a total of 10 times here. So 1.02 raised to the 10. And we get 121.899, so I'm going to round that to 121.90. And we can compare that to compounding only once. So it does seem it's in our best interest, no pun intended. If you can get your interest compounded more often, it'll be to your advantage. Let's see what happens if we try to compound quarterly. So quarterly means every three months. You're going to take your APR and split it up into four equal parts. You'll get 1% every three months. 
So in the case of waiting one year, you can expect to have $100 and you got 1% four times. And that's $104.06. So already we're seeing compounding quarterly is to our advantage over compounding semi-annually. If we do this for two years, you're gonna have $100 and you're gonna get 1% four times per year for two years, so you're gonna get 1% eight times. And so again, you can see we are getting better yields. Finally, after five years, you're going to have a $100 deposit. You're gonna get 1% four times per year, but for five years, so you're gonna get 1% a total of 20 times. Now let's break this down a little bit, shall we? How did I get the 1.01? Well, I took one and to it, I added our APR, which is a 4% divided into four pieces. Now, how do I get the 20 exponent? Well, compounding it four times per year, but for five years. So we multiply four times five and get that 20. So that's how we break down how we got this 1.01 raised to the 20. So obviously the more often you compound, the better. The question though is what happens if you compound it every month? Then you wanna divide 4% into 12 pieces. You can also compound every day. You can even compound every hour, every second, every nanosecond. You can compound, pretty much be in a perpetual state of compounding. And we're gonna study what your yields are when you compound more and more and more and just see what happens. Let's go to the next slide. So we're gonna use the formula below for when interest is compounded some finite number of times each year. I want you to compare our breakdown right here compared to this formula you're seeing emerge. Compare these two. You can see where all the pieces are coming from. The R is your APR and in decimal form. N is the number of times per year that the interest was compounded. The T is the number of years that have gone by. And this could be a whole number or it could be also, it could be a non-whole number like 7.3 years or something like that. The P is the principal. And then we're gonna say A is the future amount. These are the components you need to perform tasks that involve compound interest. So if you look back at these cases up here, in the case where you compound only once per year, this would have been an N equals one case. Compounding semi-annually would have been an N equals two case. Compounding quarterly would have been an N equals four case. And you can see that N right here, that four showing up here and here. Then here was our APR in decimal form, our number of years, and then our principal in the front and that calculation yields our A, our future amount. Now, increasing compounding can only grow your money so much. As N approaches infinity, the formula above becomes the formula below. Now, let's just quickly explore the evolution of this formula. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna type in the formula instead, put one plus, the APR was 4%. We're gonna divide that by N. Let's just do a one-year calculation, so we'll just raise that to the N because T will be one. So this is the amount of money you get in one year where N is the number of times you compound, $100 is the principal, and 4% is the APR. We're gonna add a slider for N and let N be anything from one up to, let's just go to a thousand. And let's let the step size be one. When N is one, notice the calculation gives you 104. That's how much we had in our table after one year when N was one. Now we're gonna stick with the one year situation because I let T be one, but we're just gonna let N be two and see this number show up and then let N be four and see this number show up. And then we're gonna explore what happens if N just gets larger and larger. So when N is two, it's 104.04. When N is four, we got that 104.06. If I say compound it monthly, N will be 12. If I say compound daily, N will be 365. Watch the yield as I drag N over. It is growing. It is always slightly higher than it was before but it's not growing out of control. It appears to be following an asymptote. Like there's a maximum amount that you could possibly get out of this scenario if all you do is vary how often you compound. Now, if you take this formula, break it apart a little bit. So I'm gonna show you where this equation here comes from a little bit. Principal times one plus R over N raised to the NT. Now, if I pull that T off as a separate exponent like this, it can be shown in calculus that the limit as N approaches infinity of this expression that it approaches e raised to the r, where e is Euler's constant. And so when you substitute e to the r right here, and then raise that to the t, this is where you get this p times e raised to the rt. Notice this formula has no n in it. The r and the t and the a and the p all are the same as they were above. The only difference is that e is this Euler's constant 2.718 forever. 2.7 is a common rounding of e. And I would just use E in your calculator, the E button when you're doing calculations. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the value of a $100 investment after five years with an APR of 4%
and then the phrasing is compounded continuously. That means that we're compounding so often that n is effectively infinity. And if n is effectively infinity, then we switch gears to the, we'll call it the PERT, the continuous compounding formula. And that's the key phrase. Look for that phrase compounded continuously. That is the trigger for using this formula instead of using the one up here. So what we're going to do is do our calculation. The principal is $100. Notice we're doing the same data as we did in the table above. E raised to the interest rate, which is 0 0.04, times T, which was five years. 100 times E raised to the 0 0.04 times 5. And we get 122 and 14 cents. Compare this to what we got when we compounded quarterly it's a little bit more. In fact, this number here, given everything is the same except for how often you compound, this number here is the max yield through increasing compounding only. Let's see, this was a five-year yield, so let's go up here and, and put a five next to this n so that we have a five-year yield up here as well. Watch what happens when I go from compounding it once per year, look how much we're getting, 122.67. And as n increases, you're going to see this value get larger and larger and larger, but never exceed what we get when we compound continuously. So this compounding continuously formula is a formula that will help you know the maximum amount you could possibly get by only increasing compounding. Okay, at your child's birth, you deposit $12,000 into an account with an APR of 7% compounded every four months to be used to purchase a car on your child's 16th birthday find the most expensive car that could be purchased at that time. In other words, we just gotta find the future value of this investment. So our future value is the A, that's what we're looking for. The deposit is the principal, that's the 12,000. Then we do one plus, the interest rate is 7%, so put the interest rate in decimal form and divide that by, okay, we're compounding every four months. Sometimes a student will just put a four here without thinking. Every four months means three times per year. So the N should be a three in this case. And then we do three times, then how many years? Well, from the child's birth to the child's 16th birthday is a 16 years have elapsed. So T will be 16. 12,000 times one plus 0.07 divided by three, and then raise it to the, and I'll put some parentheses here, three times 16 years. So that's 36,308 and six cents. This is the value of a car you could purchase. Now let's say that you want to have a certain amount in four years to buy a car. You want to have 20,000 in four years. Find the amount of money you should deposit now into an account with an APR 5.5% compounded monthly. All right, so compounded monthly, that's gonna be N is equal to 12. You want to have 20,000. So the A is gonna be 20,000. What we don't know is the principal. So I'm gonna leave the P as a P and we'll solve for P. And we're gonna have one plus, the interest rate is 5.5%, so 0 0.055 is our APR. And we're compounding it monthly, so divide that by 12, and then raise it to the 12 times the number of years. And we want four years to go by. And so P can be found by doing 20,000 and dividing it by this expression, which you can also write with a negative exponent. Right? Whenever you have an A to the B in a denominator, you can write that as A to the negative B and put it back in the numerator. So sometimes you'll see the formulas do something like this. They'll write the 20,000, paste this up here. Let me go ahead and change this 12 times four to a 48, but put a negative 48 exponent right there. And this will give us the present value, which is the principal. So we want this to be 20,000. We had an APR of 5.5%. We were compounding it every month and we had a 48 exponent because it was four times 12, but we wanted it to be negative so here's the calculation that gives us how much we should deposit now. So 16,058 and 45. You deposit $600 into an account with an APR of 8% compounded continuously. Okay, compounded continuously. There's that phrase that's going to trigger the use of this formula instead. Find how long it will take for your money to double. Okay, so this is a time question. We wanna find T. We write down the PERT formula, P times E to the RT. So $600 will be the principal, and the future amount is going to be $1,200 because we want it to double. The interest rate we know is 0 0.08. What I don't know is T, so that stays T. And we create this equation, which is an exponential equation that we want to solve for T. I'm going to begin by dividing both sides by 600. That gives me 2 is equal to E to the 0 0.08 T. Now I'm going to convert this to log form. Or you can do a natural log of both sides, and that would accomplish the same thing. 
So if I were to take this equation and do a natural log of each side, this becomes natural log of 2 is equal to just 0.08t because we use the property where this 0.08t drops down in front and the natural log of e, remember natural log has a base of e, so e raised to what power equals e, natural log of e would be 1. Or you can just think, hey, convert this to log form, and it should just produce this statement. And now we want to solve for t, so we're going to say t is equal to natural log of 2 divided by 0.08. I'll type in ln for natural log, and then of 2, and then we're going to divide all that by 0.08. So roughly 8.66, and that was measured in years. That's how long it will take for your money to double. Now notice I could have asked this question without giving you the principle. I could have just said, how long does it take any amount of money to double if you put it into an account with an APR of 8% compounded continuously? Because it really, if you'll notice, it doesn't matter what you put here for the principle, as long as you put double it right here. Let's say this was 1,000, then this would be 2,000. And when you solve, you would still get a two right here. So you would still lead to this same statement that's sitting right here. You simply would have said, okay, well, I want my principle to double, so I'm gonna change the A to twice the principal. When you divide out the P's, you get exactly this statement right here. You deposit $600 into an account with interest compounded every four months. And every four months, that's N equals three. Find the interest rate. So now we're looking for R. Needed so that your money doubles in five years. This time we're beginning with this formula, one plus R over N raised to the N T. We know n is 3, we know t is 5, we know the principal is 600, and we want our money to double. So a new amount will be 1,200, the principal is 600. Again, I didn't necessarily have to tell you the 600 here. The interest rate we don't know, we know n is 3, and we know t is 5. So this is going to be a 15 up here. And this is the equation we want to solve for r. I'll divide by 600 again. Now I want to do a 15th root of 2. So this gives us 1 plus r over 3 is a 15th root of 2. Then we're going to subtract 1 and then triple. So we get r is equal to the triple of the 15th root of 2 minus 1, and that's in parentheses. 3 times. To do the 15th root of 2, you can do 2 raised to the 1 15th, and then get out of that exponent and say minus 1. And notice the decimal we get. I'm going to round it to the nearest thousandth here, so 0 0.142. In other words, in percentage, that would be a 14.2%. This is the interest rate you would need if compounded every four months so that money will double in five years. Okay, and this wraps up the lesson on financial models where we have compound interest and sometimes interest is compounded continuously.